This is Gemara Nidarim Daf Beis Baruch Shechianu. We're back with a brand new Mesechta, and as always, we begin with the same bracha and tefillah. That v'siyat deshmaya, the same fire and excitement that always accompanies a Daf Beis, a new Mesechta, a new Mishnah, should carry us through Mir Hashem the entirety of the Mesechta. And let's begin. Says the Mishnah, Kol Kinuye Nidarim Kinidarim. All the kinuyim, the word kinoi means a similar term. Art school says an equivalent term. It's similar to the word a kinoi when you call your friend. The nickname is called mikana shem lechaviro. He's called a kinoi, a nickname. So all the nicknames of nidarim, all the similar terms of nidarim, says in the Mishnah are like nidarim vecharamim kicharamim. Similarly. All the terms of haramim are like the haramim themselves. Of course, we didn't translate haramim. We'll get there. Ushvuais kishvuais. And all the shvuyais, all the swearings are like swearings. Unizirais kiniziris. So part A of the Mishnah, we have four different entities that we're discussing. And all the kinuyim, all the similar terms, the nicknames, the like words of these types are the same as them themselves, meaning all the nickname of the Nidarim are like the Nidarim, the Haram, the Shvuz, and the Ziris. So now let's understand this before we go to part two of the Mishnah. As everyone can see over here, on the right side of your page is Sendas Rashi on the top. If you go look at other Mesechtas, it does not say Rashi on top. And as the famous saying goes, if I have to tell you what it is, usually that means it's not. So therefore, this is not Rashi famously, and rather, it's another Pirish. And there is the reason why, usually when you learn a Darin, you do not learn it with Rashi, you learn it with the Ran. And that is on the other side of the page, as you can see, just highlighted in front of you. Now the Ran does the job of Rashi, which being the Mefarish, being the Pirish, being the translation, like the incredible Rebbe that Rashi is. Of course, no one can take the place of Rashi, but that's what the Ran does first and foremost. Then the Ran continues. The Ran is a Rishon. We have the Ran on all over Shas. Then the Ran continues and explains and asks questions, more similar style to Taisa. So usually, all the explanations that we're going to be referencing are coming from the Ran. And when we point out the different subtle notes, we'll highlight them in the Ran. So which we're going to do right now is the Ran over here begins with almost an introduction. The Ran starts and says, There's two types of Nidarim. We're learning a Masechli called Nidarim. We have to understand what is a Nedar, what is a vow. And then we have to understand, are there only one type of vow and what does that mean? So says the Ran, there are two types of vows. In Nidre Hektish, Shahu, Maktish, Lebedik Abayis. Again, reading a few lines from the Ran. As you can see, it's a pretty short Amud. One type of vow is a neder of hektish, which means what? You give something, you make it holy, you sanctify it for the Bedik Abayis. Oy, Lemizbeach. Or you give it to the Mizbeach. And the Ran says, al mashu shaloi. And if you want to give something to the Beis Amigdash, I want to give this cup of water to the Beis Amigdash, it has to be my cup of water. And if I give this cup of water, continues the Ran, and every person in the world cannot touch this water, because now it belongs to the entity called Beis Amigdash, called Hektish. That is one type of Nadir, which is not the focus of our Mesech, the Kol Nedarim. Oi, type 2 of Nadir, says the Ran is Nidri Isser, which is what? You take something that is mutter, for example, this cup of water, and you make it usr onto yourself. And it says the Ran, we're on the last wide line of the Ran. This type of nadir, this type of vow that I'm saying this entity is forbidden to me, I could even say this on your item. I could say your cup of water is forbidden to me. And and this is not an isra that's for everyone, it's for me. So your cup of water is forbidden from me. Type A of a nadir is that this cup of water is to the base of Megdash. That's everyone in the world now can't touch the water because it belongs to the base of Megdash. Type 2 over here is what? Type 2 is when we're saying that your cup of water or my cup of water, whichever way you want to say it, is what? Is forbidden to me. This type of nadir, type 2 of nadir, is something specific to me. So if I make your cup of water forbidden to me, could you drink your water? Of course, it's usher to me. 
says the Ran, and this is the line we're looking for. Zu, this mesechta he be'inyan nidre iser. We're dealing with type two neder when you're making something of someone of something forbidden to yourself. Shemasha sheninu kan. That's the introduction of the Ran. Really, that's the main point. There are two types of nedarim. One is I give the item to the base amigdash. That is not our topic. Type two is when I make an item forbidden to myself. That is the topic over here. Now, the Ram continues, and the Ram just points out that haramim is a little bit off-placed, because the word haramim usually means that it is bedek hambayis. The word cherim usually means, we've had it many times, that something is given to the Beis HaMikdash. So if we just said that we're not dealing with things given to the Beis HaMikdash, what does that mean? And the Ram says that what it means is, it just means hareni olecha cherim hamoider aser. You're just saying that it's a word, a similar word to the word neder, is the word cheirem, that you're making it like it's to the Beis HaMikdash, meaning you're making it forbidden to yourself. And then we have type 3 is Shavuos, and type 4 is Nezirus. One more hakdama that I like to see in the Ran, just that will hopefully make things more clear in the future. The Ran continues in explaining this Nidre Iser, which is what we're talking about, and says the Ran, there are three types of Nidre Iser. Iker HaNeder, the main form of the neder of the vow. Number two, the Kinuyav, the nicknames, as we saw in the Mishnah, the other terms of the neder. And number three is the Yodos of the neder, the handles. So three types of Nedarim. Now let's just highlight a few words, more words of the Ran. What is the Iker Neder is when you say this item is Aser unto myself. The Ran points out something called Hitfisu, something that we're going to see. It's whether you say that this is going to be like a carbon or not. That is part A of a neder. Part B is in the third wide line of the Ran, we have the word Kinuyav. Is instead of saying the word carbon, that this item is also upon myself like a carbon, you say either Kainam, Kaineach, or Kaines. As we said, the word Kinoy means a nickname. And type three, of the neder, which is what we're calling Yodais a neder, is a little bit further on in the Ran. The Ran over here says, the Yodais nedarim is what? And again, all these things the Gemara is going to explain. Shemaschel b'miksas, let's just get everyone could see, there we go. Shemaschel b'miksas diburish al neder, you begin saying words of a neder, Elosh enoi goimer oisa, you don't finish this statement, and that part of the word has the status of the entire word. And the Ran says, what does that do with Yadda? It's like someone who holds the handle of a kli, he moves the entire item. You hold the handle of a coffee mug, you move the entire mug. So if you say part of the neder, it has a din of the whole neder. Those are the three types of the nidarim, the three parts of the nidarim, I should say. The main part of the nidarim, the ikaran nidarim, the kinoi, the nickname of the nidarim, and the yadais of the nidarim. So the Mishnah just taught us that in these four entities, nidarim, vows, haramim, things that are also like based on migdash, like carbon, shvuois, a different type of vow, nizirois, a different form of saying that something is asr, all of them, the kinoyim, the nicknames are like the item itself. Continues the Mishnah. We'll call this part B of the Mishnah. You are in a neder from me. You're separated from me. You're distanced from me. And what do he? What do? Excuse me. What does he say? What's distance? That I won't eat from you. I won't taste from you. Oser. It is forbidden to do any of those three entities. Menuda anilacha. If someone says, I am minuda, minuda is a form of chayrim, a form of putting yourself in chayrim. Ravakiva, yachaychech vazel hachmer. Ravakiva was struggling. He thought that this case would be machmer, that we're going to be stringent on this case. So those are part B of the Mishnah, our cases. Someone says to his friend, you are in a nether to me, you're separated from me, you're distanced from me. Now what form of distance, what form of nether? And this is how the Ran explains this part of the Mishnah, that the second part of the Mishnah, really we put the two together, as if it says, one says to his friend, 
You are nether from me that you will not eat from me, or I will not eat from you. You're separated from me that I will not taste from you, that I will not eat from you, etc., etc. In all those cases, it is forbidden. So that is the Mishnah part A. The four types of the nicknames are like the item itself, and part B are the cases. Says the Gemara, as we turn over here to Amid base, says the Gemara, the Mishnah said, Kal kinuye nidarim ar kinidarim. Said the Mishnah, as we explained extensively, that all the kinuyim, all the nicknames of the nadar, have the same status as the nadar. My shina gabe nazir deloiketani lulekulu. Why by nazir? And as many mesechlas and shas that we've seen begin with comparing and equating a similar mesechla to that. So what's the reason by Nazir that it does not say all of them? And as the Tabran points out, Kiloimar, which of course always means just like in Rashi, meaning to say, not a simple explanation, that by Misechlis Nazir, Loitani, it only says that the Kinuyim of Naziris are like Nazirais. In Nazir, it focuses on the topic at hand. Nazir. So asks the Gemara, Kol kinuyi nedarim kinedarim, and the Mishnah gave the whole long and lengthy list, nedarim charamim shvuiz and nezirois, my shna gabi nazir, to like gadani lulukulu. Why by nazir do we not list all of them? Umay shna gabi nedarim de gadani lulukulu. Why in our Mishnah do we list all four cases? Explains the Gemara. A fundamental, no, excuse me, not a fundamental answer. Saying the Gemara, almost a, a, I would call it a classical answer, like we see in Shas. Misham the Neder Ushvua Ksivi Gabi Adadi. The Torah, as the ran, ran in the third wide line, third line from the top said, Ki Yidr Neder Lashem, O Yishava Shvua. The Torah puts Neder and Shvua side by side. Misham the Neder Ushvua Ksivi Gabi Adadi. Therefore, Tani Tartin. Therefore, once we said neder, we said its counterpart shvua. Vakivan the tani tartin tani likulu. And once we said two of them, we continue. And what's next? We say three of them. Says the Gemara. Okay, I understand. You said nedarim, so you said shvuois. You said shvuois. Velisni kinoi shvuois. Baser nedarim. So why do we not list the kinuyim of shvuois after the nedarim? Why? Do we go into the, why do we mention the Charamim in the Mishnah? Says the Gemara, I didn't turn in the dark in meaning. What we're asking right now is if we scroll back up for a moment and look at the Mishnah, the Mishnah said, Nidarim, Charamim Shavuos. One second. You just told me that Nidarim and Shavuos go hand in hand. They always hold each other's hands. Okay, great. So then why didn't the Mishnah say Nidarim Shavuos together and then Charamim? Why did the Mishnah say Nidarim? Then bumps up Haramim and then gets the Shavuos. So explains the Gemara. Explains the Gemara. I did it on Nidarim. Once the Mishnah says Nidarim, Dimitzar Chavsalei. That what is a Nedar, as the first Ran explains so extensively and eloquently. That there's two types of Nidarim. And we're dealing with Part B of Nidarim when you're making that item usher to yourself. I'm saying your water is forbidden to me, your car is forbidden to me. So once we got involved in that type of forbiddance of a Nedar, Tananami Haramim. So we go and we list in Haramim. Why? Because as we explained in the Mishnah, here the Chayram doesn't mean it's given to the Beis HaMikdash. Here the Chayram means that item is usher like a carbon. So we listed Haramim. Haramim. La'afuke, and that comes to exclude that a Shavua is slightly different. La'afuke Shavua, dika usher nafshei min ha'chavsa. A shvua is a different entity. There's two ways to make something forbidden to you. You can make that item usher to you, or you can make yourself usher to that item. Neder, shvua are those two sides of the coin. Neder is that you make, excuse me, that item usher to yourself. Shvua is that you make yourself usher to the item. So once we started the Mishnah learning Nadar, which is what? Making the item also to yourself. We continue with Haramim, which is what? Making the item also to yourself. Once we did that, then we get involved in Shavua, which is the next step. What Shavua? Making yourself usher to the item. And that's how we got the Mishnah. Nedarim, Charamim, Shavuais, Nizirois. 
Whereas in Mesechtas Nazir, we only listed Nizirais. Why? Again, because the Darim and Shvuas go hand in hand. But once we said Nidarim, we got interrupted by Haram, and which are very similar. And then we finish with the counterpart of Shvuas. Says the Gemara, another question on the Mishnah. Ten lines down, the first word in line is Shavua. Pasach Kinuyan. The Mishnah open up with the Lachas of Kinoy, which we said are the nicknames, as the Mishnah said, called Kinuye Nidarim Kinidarim, called Kinuye Nidarim. But then, what was part B of the Mishnah? Part B of the Mishnah should have been explaining what? The Kinuyim, the nicknames. Yeah, what did the Mishnah say? But then the Mishnah went on to give examples of a Yad. What's a Yad? As the Gemara explains, the part B of the Mishnah was, The Mishnah said cases of you making yourself usher, which are cases, as we're going to see in Daf Yod, which is what we're going to coin, Yadais, that you didn't say the full story, you said part of the story, which we said is like the Yad, the handle of the Kli. You hold the handle, the whole Kli goes with it. So says, asks the Gemara, the Mishnah began with Kinuyin, we should have continued with the nicknames. Why did the Mishnah continue giving examples of Yadais? Question number one. Question number two, Visu, and furthermore, Yadais, Inchi, the Mishnah didn't even mention Yadais. Meaning, you just give an explanation, explained cases of Yadais, without saying the word Yadais in the Mishnah. If the Mishnah would have said Yadais, then said Yadais, that's fine. Then we would have only had question A, that we first should have done Kinuyin. But that's not what the Mishnah did. The Mishnah explained Yadais, never told us what a Yad is. It's true, we knew what a Yad was from where the Ran so eloquently taught us what a Yad was. But the Mishnah didn't say it. Answers the Gemara, Ayri behind. No, really the Mishnah is dealing with Yadais. Any classical Gemara form says the Gemara, we're missing some words from the Mishnah. And now we learn out how we're going to learn the Mishnah as follows. The Mishnah says all the Kinuyim, all the nicknames of the Dharma, like the Nidarim, the Yadais Nidarim Kinidarim, and the handles of the Nidarma, like Nidarim, those words we're adding into the Mishnah. And now the Mishnah goes to explain the cases of the Yadais. Okay, so we answer part B, question two, because we're adding the words into the Mishnah of Yadais Nidarim Kinidarim. Asks the Gemara, okay, you explain to me why. Or how we knew the din of Yadis in the Mishnah. But why the Lifrish Kinuyin Beresha? We first should have explained the Beresha. How do you talk? You give two cases, Kinuyim, Yadis, and then what do you explain? First Kinuyim and then Yadis. Why does the Mishnah first explain Yadis? Answers the Gemara. The item that you left off with, the item that you explained second, Yadais, that is what you explained first, because you just said that entity called Yadais. Now I'm going to explain to you what it is. As we learned in a Mishnah together in Shabbos, with what are you allowed to light on Shabbos, with what are you not allowed to light. Nusach Ashkenaz says this every Friday night, and then you continue. The Mishnah first explains things you don't light with. What, meaning, what are we showing? We're showing that we are explained first the second item, the item that is closest to that which is required explanation. Another example from Shamas. What are you allowed to do? Hatamana, hide in or not? In time, in Bechulu. But Ma'isha Yaitza, third example. Ma'in Yaitza, with what is woman allowed to carry on Rosh Hashanah? Loite to Isha. And therefore, we give, again, we give an example of the things that are the second thing first. So answers the Gemara, we find many times in Shas, three examples from Masech Shabbos that we do indeed explain part two first. So in our Mishnah, we explain Yadais first. Ask the Gemara one second. Is your rule true? Is it true that we don't always explain part A first and rather we always explain part B first? But we learned in a Mishnah. We learned in a Mishnah. 
They said, Gemara and Baba Asa, we did not do it yet. There are those that inherit um anchilim and bequeath to others. Noichlein v'loi manchilin, and there are some that inherit and don't bequeath. Ve'elu, and what does the Mishnah explain first? Noichlein um anchilin. The Mishnah explains case A first, not case B first. Another example from Yevamos, Yishmutar Slavayaleim v'asa liyameim. There are some that are mutter to their husbands and forbidden to the Yibam. Mutter liyameim v'asur Slavayaleim. And then there are some that are mutter to the Yivim and also to the Baileim. Ve'elu mutar is the Baileim, v'asur is the Yameim. And the Mishnah there explains part A first. So again, you just told me a whole rule. Three examples from Shabbos that we explained first. The second example, the item that we left off with, but now we see multiple examples that we explain the first case first. Another example. Yesh tuna yishem levayna. Then some are tuna yishem and v'loy levayna by karbanais. There are some that require oil and Levina, the frankincense, and some require just the shaman and not the levina. And the Mishnah explains those who shaman and levina. Similarly, Yeshunas Hagosha Vintunas Tanufa. Another example from Karbanas. There are some that Hagosha to bring the carbon close and do not require Tanufa waving the carbon. Where there are some Karbanas Tanufa Vilay Hagosha. That you wave it and you don't bring it close. And the Mishnah explains which first? A. Vailu Tunas Hagosha. Another example, Yesh Bachar Lenach Lavein Bachar Lekayin. There are some examples of a Bachar that are a firstborn for inheritance, but not a firstborn to a Kayin. Some Bachar Lekayin Vein Bachar Lenach There are some examples that it's a firstborn to a Kayin and not a firstborn to a Nach Lo. Vezehu Bachar Lenach What is the example of Ag Bachar Lenach which is case A? So, so many cases that we have two cases and we're explaining which first? A, not B. Vein Bachar Lekayin. Answers the Gemara, Halon, in all these cases, the last six, seven cases that we just listed, Mishum Da'av Shilu, Mifarish Auda Pasach Beresha. Since in these cases it's Avshi, there's many of them, therefore, says the Gemara, we explain that one first. Whereas in the other cases, we're not a whole list. There's not so many in the list. Therefore, we do not explain it first. Ask the Gemara two lines to the bottom. One second. It's not a lot of them. And yet, I meaning the Mishnah only has two clauses, you just gave me an answer. That when we have a whole long list, we go back to the first one. But one second, in the case of what is an animal allowed to carry on in Shabbos or not, there's not many, there's only two cases in the Mishnah. And the Katani, Yotze Gamal, and the Mishnah there started off the Gemara explaining Yotze Gamal first. We'll turn over to Gimel and Aleph, and this will conclude. El Alav Davka answers the Gemara, you're right. The Mishnah is, there's no rule. Not everything needs a rule. Sometimes that which you said first, you explain first. Sometimes that which you said second, you explain first. And the Ran over here actually hones in on the fact, not only is there no rule, but says the Ran, No, that's not the right Ran, excuse me, that's the one going back on case A, in the, on the previous case, that's a lot of cases. Says the Ran, that we're Mishani Sidrayu, sometimes we're going to change the order to show that there's no Kepeda, there's no precise order, and we'll stop over here tomorrow, the second day of Nadar, and we'll pick up with another explanation, as the Gemara says, Vibay is Ema, a second explanation into why our Mishnah gave the order that it did, first explaining, Yadais, have a fabulous, fabulous day.